today we're going to look at a couple of thought experiments that you might see in mechanics. So it's all well and good, you know, solving numerical problems and stuff like that. But I think, you know, you really start to get a feel for whether you understand physics or not when someone presents you with a problem and you have to think it through without necessarily just using the formula or using the maths. So here we've got some sort of an, a hill, basically. And what we're saying is we've got a ball that's going to roll down the hill. And we're asking, is the velocity and the acceleration of the ball going to be greater or smaller at both points on the hill? So is, is it, does the acceleration increase? Does the velocity increase as it rolls down the hill? Now, this is a little bit trickier than your average problem because we're dealing with a curved surface here. So what you might think is, well, the only thing that's affecting the uh, ball is its weight, and that's equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the weight is equal to mg, and that's the downward force on it, and therefore its mass is constant and g is constant, so the downward force is going to be constant. So because of Newton's second law, if the force is going to be constant, uh, the acceleration is going to be constant. But this is, and again, as I said, you won't see this in a, in a textbook because it sort of takes a slightly higher uh, level of, of thinking about physics than you typically see uh, in sort of a, a school examination or a, a, a early in your degree. We don't tend to, to look at sort of curved surfaces or, or two-dimensional motion in this kind of a way. But we can still break it down and figure out whether, you know, is the acceleration higher or, or lower? So our first sort of go at it by just using the mechanics that we know from the very early chapters in our books is the downward force is w that doesn't change therefore the acceleration doesn't change so we think you know on our first guess that the acceleration of the ball as it, it can either slide or roll whatever you want um as it slides or rolls down the hill the acceleration um doesn't change but if you if we look at it and think about it and draw a free body diagram we see that that might ne not necessarily be the case. So let's take a green pen here and call this W. So this is the weight of the ball, W, and it doesn't change. So we can look at the weight and draw that vector in uh, both at the top and at the bottom and say, right, this is W. Hopefully they've been drawn the same length. So the weight of the ball doesn't change. As we said, the... Um, so the downward force should be the same. So the acceleration should be the same. So let's continue and build up the free body diagrams in these two different scenarios. So we're not going to we're not going to look at you know a, sort of a calculus problem where we're looking at the ball at every step. We'll just take these the high point and the low point and see does the acceleration change by drawing a free body diagram here. So if we were to draw a free body diagram, we put our sort of surface if you like at the instant at the instant where the ball is so let's draw in a, a surface that's kind of perpendicular to the direction of the ball so we're, we're saying that we're calling this our x-axis so we've done this in previous problems here so the blue here is going to be the plus x-axis and we just draw it at a tangent to exactly where the ball is at that moment and that makes things a little bit easier so the question then is what component of the weight is acting perpendicular to that in the y-axis and we can do that just with simple uh, trigonometry again so we can draw it in let's take I'm not sure what, what color we'll take a yellow here and we'll draw in our triangle so the component of the weight acting along the y-axis is going to look something like that so we can break our weight vector into x and y components so the x and y components are the yellow so this is going to be the x component of the weight and this is going to be the y component of the weight so remember, the way we've drawn our axes here, the y-axis is like this, basically, to where we are, and the x-axis is like this. So now we've got our y component and we've got our x component. And what's going to determine the acceleration of the ball as it slides or rolls is going to be the net force on it. So what are the forces acting on the, on the ball? Well, we said already its weight is you know, pulling it down the hill. But there's another force that we haven't considered yet, and that is the the normal force. So that's where we're going with this. In order to figure out the normal force, that's going to be balanced by the component of the weight that's acting in the y direction. So if this is the y component of the weight, then that's going to be exactly balanced by 
the normal force. So we'll draw that in green here. So the normal force is going to be just the equal and opposite vector to the y component of the weight. So we can draw that in here as n. So the two green vectors here, so let's draw, fill them in and draw them sort of a little bit, maybe a little bit bolder. The two green vectors are the two forces that are acting on the ball. So we've got the weight acting downwards and the normal force acting perpendicular to the the surface, if you like, or you know, the, the tangential surface that the ball sits on at that particular instant in time. So the net force on that ball at that time is going to be the sum or of those two vectors, the normal force and the weight. So let's just put our proper vector notation in there. And we can we can figure out that by just vector addition without getting into any maths. We can just use the parallelogram rule to figure what that vector out figure out what that vector is. So let's just draw this dashed line here and this dashed line here, roughly speaking. And this point here tells us the direction that our, our resultant vector points in. So let's go, uh, let me see if I can make a nice thick line here for this one. So from the point we're interested in, in this direction, so okay, that's a very big line. This is going to be our net force pulling the ball down the hill. So that's our net force. Uh, let's call that just F subscript N. So that's the force that's pulling the ball down the hill. The ball has a certain mass and the combination of the force and mass is going to give us the acceleration of the ball. So the mass doesn't change. So the longer that vector is, the more acceleration the ball has. So the ball has a certain fairly, you know, what looks like a large acceleration at that point. Um, as it rolls down the hill, so it's got a large acceleration. Now let's just do the same graphical analysis at the bottom of the hill and see what that vector looks like. If it's smaller, that's gonna have told that's gonna tell us that the acceleration is lower because the force is lower. So we can do the same thing again. So we've got the weight. Now our new surface, you know, our tangent to the, the direction of the ball at this instant is here. So this is our new plus x axis for the new position of the ball. So this is our plus x axis now. Uh, as I said, it's tangential to where the ball is. And now we can use that to figure out the y component of the, the weight, the y, x and y component of the weight of the ball, as we did in yellow the last time. So let me get this. Whoops. How has that happened? Let me get this right now. So it's going to look, because of the direction of that surface now, the shape of this triangle is going to be quite a bit different than it was. Okay, so now it's going to look like this. So now this is our y component of the weight, and this is our x component of the weight at, at this point on the track when the ball is much further down the track than it was earlier on. So the y component and the x component, you can see that triangle is significantly different looking to the one we drew earlier on. So now if I can find my pens, we can go back and draw the normal force in here. So the normal force now is going to be balanced by the y component of the weight. So it looks like our uh, normal force vector has to be a lot longer now, you know, to get from here to here is a lot longer. So we can draw in our normal force vector and that looks pretty good. So now this is going to be our normal force vector. This is going to be our uh, weight vector down here and we'll color in the triangle. And the net force, so there's no additional forces acting on this um, ball now at this point than there was when it started off on its journey. So we can use again the parallelogram rule to determine the net force on the ball. Okay, so let's try to do that then. So this, this parallelogram is a little bit tighter um, than the last one was. So we drop our line down here in green, our broken line. And then we draw our parallelogram using parallel line here as we should and now what we find is this is the new corner of it here which I'm circling in green so we get our big pen out again here and draw the line that represents the net force which is this thick green line here so that's oops let me go back and just write in what we were calling that one so now this is going to be f n so if you take a look at those two lines that we're calling the net force line so that's this one up here and this one up here it should be, you know, obvious to you that the one at the, the top of the hill or higher up the hill is much longer 
than the one at the bottom of the hill. So as I said already, that tells us that the net force on the ball is much higher at the top of the hill than it is at the bottom of the hill, which tell us this, tells us that the acceleration is higher at the top of the hill than the bottom of the hill. So this two-dimensional problem, you know, even though we're we're used to gravity, just, you know, the weight being constant, so the force being constant, so the acceleration being constant. When we put in this curved hill here, we've changed things a lot because, you know, at each point in the ball's journey, we have to analyze it. We have to draw a new X and a new Y axis. And what we find, you know, without doing any complicated maths, just using our graphic and graphical analysis and our components and our parallelogram rule is that the acceleration actually goes down as the ball rolls down the hill. And that, you know, to a certain extent, that makes sense because as the ball rolls down the hill, um, you know, if we draw more of the hill, by the time it gets to, okay, let's scribble this in here. By the time it gets to, for example, this point here, you know, if you've ever rolled a ball down a curved surface like this, it, it makes sense that it's going to stop because the acceleration gets very, very small, and then friction eventually overcomes it. So a nice example of a problem that we can solve with graphical analysis, and not one that you'll see in your typical uh, physics books, takes a little bit of extra thought and really tests your understanding of the, the concepts that are in it.